Hello and welcome back to Abstract Linear Algebra, the video series where we talk about advanced topics in linear algebra. And in today's part 35, we will start talking about the theory behind the so-called Jordan normal form. Indeed, on the concrete level, we could say that this is just a matrix decomposition, but on the abstract level, it's also a special change of basis. This means every linear map acting from a given vector space to itself can be represented by such a Jordan normal form. And what this special matrix representation actually is, we will discuss today. However, as always, before we start with the details, I first want to thank all the nice people who support this channel on Steady, here on YouTube or via other means. And as always, you can use the link in the description to download the PDF version of this video. Now before we start with the definition of the Jordan normal form, you should know that I already have a whole video series about it. However, this one mostly shows the calculation point of view, so how to deal with explicit examples. So you should definitely check this out if you want to see a lot of examples, because in this video we will explain the theory behind it. Indeed, I would say we can immediately start with an important fact you should never forget. Namely, every square matrix with complex entries can be transformed into a triangular matrix. More precisely, we would say A is similar to a triangular matrix. And we can say even more because we can choose a very special triangular matrix, namely the so-called Jordan normal form. And here I should definitely mention that this matrix is named after a French mathematician with name Jordan. However, the English pronunciation is definitely very common, so I will just keep that one. Now we will explain how this matrix J looks like, but for the moment you can remember it's a triangular matrix with some special properties. Indeed, one important thing is that the eigenvalues of our matrix A are on the diagonal of J. And moreover, please recall that the similarity property means that we have an invertible matrix X, such that A is given as X times J times X inverse. So you might remember this important formula from the diagonalization of matrices, where J is given as a diagonal matrix. But you immediately see this whole thing here is much better, because it always works, at least when we deal with the whole complex realm for the entries. This small restriction makes sense, because even a real matrix could have complex eigenvalues. Indeed, this whole Jordan normal form transformation is the common generalization for the diagonalization. This means in the case that A is a diagonalizable matrix, the corresponding Jordan normal form is a diagonal matrix. In other words, you can just remember, the Jordan normal form brings us as close as possible to a diagonal matrix. And in order to see that, let's immediately look at some examples. And let's keep it simple with a 2 times 2 matrix. Now this is not a diagonal matrix, but we immediately see that 2 and 3 are the eigenvalues of that matrix. So we have two different eigenvalues for a given 2 times 2 matrix. And this implies we can form a basis consisting of eigenvectors and therefore the matrix is diagonalizable. So we don't have any problems here, this matrix here can be transformed to a diagonal matrix without a problem. However, the picture completely changes if A only has one eigenvalue. So let's consider 2, 1, 0, 2 as a matrix. Hence here, 2 is the only eigenvalue of A. However, A could still be diagonalizable if the eigenspace is two-dimensional. And there you should definitely know that the eigenspace is given by a kernel. Namely, it's the kernel A minus 2 times the identity matrix. Which is quite simple, we have the kernel of the matrix 0, 1, 0, 0. And this matrix is already in the row echelon form with just one pivot. So only one free variable, which implies that the eigenspace is one dimensional. Hence, we cannot span the whole two dimensional vector space with eigenvectors and therefore the matrix A is not diagonalizable. So you see, this is a simple example, we don't find enough eigenvectors to form this matrix X. Therefore the whole question for the Jordan normal form is always how to substitute the missing directions. 
And now it turns out that this given matrix A is already in the Jordan normal form. This means we have the diagonal with the eigenvalues and above the diagonal we can find ones. And besides of that, all other entries in the matrix have to be zero. Of course a 2 times 2 matrix is really simple, so let's write down the general definition of the Jordan normal form. And please never forget, here we always talk about square matrices over the complex numbers. And now we say that such a matrix is a Jordan normal form if it has a very special structure. Indeed, it should be possible to decompose J into blocks. This means we can write smaller square matrices J1, J2 and so on on the diagonal. And let's say the last index we choose here is a lowercase r. This means this natural number r lies between 1 and n. Now obviously the sizes of these blocks could be different, but in total they should fill up the whole n times n matrix J. And moreover, these square matrices Ji are called Jordan blocks. Now this is important because these Jordan blocks are block matrices again. That means if we take a block out, then this block can be decomposed into square matrices again. Hence every Ji has square matrices on the diagonal as well. And now obviously for practical reasons, these new matrices need a second index. And there let's say we go from 1 to m. So also here the sizes of the blocks could be different, but in total they should span the whole Ji block. Ok, so now since we have square matrices inside the Jordan blocks, we also need a name for these. And here we will call them Jordan boxes. So now you can remember, a Jordan normal form consists of Jordan blocks and these consists of Jordan boxes. And now finally these Jordan boxes have a special form as we have seen it in our first example before. Namely, they have a given eigenvalue on the diagonal and let's call it lambda i. So this means inside a given big Jordan block we always have the same eigenvalue lambda i. So the main diagonal here is occupied and we also have something above it. Indeed exactly on the next diagonal we find ones. Hence above each lambda there is a one with the exception of the first one. So this implies that the big Jordan normal form has mostly zeros as entries. And moreover in the end it will consist of a lot of Jordan boxes in a row. And there please don't forget, Jordan boxes can occur in a lot of sizes and also 1 times 1 is possible. And in that case it will only contain one number lambda i. And there we have it, this is the whole definition of the Jordan normal form and you might say it looks and sounds complicated. However, this is only the case because of the general description with indices, in an example everything is much simpler. And therefore let's immediately look at a suitable example. And in order to make it interesting, let's choose it big enough, let's take a 9 times 9 example. And let's say we have the eigenvalue 4 and the eigenvalue minus 3. And moreover you already know some ones can be involved, so let's say we have them here, here and there. Ok, now on the first level we have our Jordan blocks, which distinguish the eigenvalues. Hence in this example we just have two Jordan blocks J1 and J2. And now you also already know, inside these blocks we can find the Jordan boxes. And there it's quite simple to see, we have to split them up where we see the split in the ones. Therefore with our notation above, this would be J11 and the other one would be J12. So our first Jordan block J1 contains exactly two Jordan boxes, namely a 3 times 3 one and a 2 times 2 one. And then we can go to our second Jordan block and there we see exactly three boxes. Indeed, since we have no entries above the diagonal here, these two threes are 1 times 1 boxes. So this is important to see, J2 is a smaller block but it contains more boxes. And if you say this might have something to do with the corresponding eigenspaces for the eigenvalue minus 3 and 4, then you are correct. In some sense the number of boxes inside the block 
tell us how many directions in the eigenspace are missing. Indeed, there you should recall that for a diagonal matrix, we only would have 1 times 1 boxes. So in other words, the bigger the box, the more is missing. However, how this transformation from A to J actually works, we will discuss in the next videos. Therefore, I really hope we meet again and have a nice day. Bye bye.